it's all gone in the right direction for the San Francisco 49ers this year with one thing in common with the Rams. Their starting quarterback is done for the rest of the year. Unless he isn't. Uh Uh-oh. The news came Sunday from the mouth of Kyle Shanahan. He said it himself. Jimmy Garoppolo has a broken bone in his foot, and he's out for the year. And now he's not. No foot surgery required for Jimmy Garoppolo, and he could return in seven to eight weeks. Seven weeks puts him at the divisional round of the playoffs. Now, this wasn't anything the 49ers said. This could be wishful thinking from Garoppolo's standpoint. He's got a lot of money tied to his ability to play. He's got big bonuses on the line for postseason play. He's got a strong financial incentive to try to get back. But he could be back. And, you know, one of the very real questions will be, and this gets back to the Dak Prescott-Cooper Rush conversation, oh, technically he's healthy enough to play, but do we really want him to play? If if Brock Purdy has five more games under his belt in addition to the one that he just got on Sunday and everything's clicking, do we really want to upset the apple cart then? So, I, yeah, you know, the news is he could be back in seven to eight weeks. I think the analysis is, are they going to want him in seven or eight weeks? Or are they going to be content to stick with the guy who will have had six games of experience going into the playoffs? Yeah, well, I think that, that'll play a, a, a big factor in it just to see how he develops here. And he certainly didn't seem overwhelmed on Sunday, that's for sure. Did a did a really good job when you when you think of all the circumstances there. But, you know, Mike, yeah, you're you're saying it, right? I mean, I don't know. I, you know, first off, he could be back in seven or eight weeks. All right, so he could be back. But that doesn't mean like he's game ready, ready to play in a football game in eight weeks. That means he could be back on the practice field. And then we could see how it goes from there. And again, it's it's a it's a foot injury here where you're not going to be able to throw a whole lot here. You're not going to be able to do anything for a while. Okay, then maybe we get five or six down weeks down the road. Okay, maybe you could stand there and throw. Okay, but now all right, now it's that seven or eight week mark. Oh wait, wait, now you could start moving. I mean, you're just going to start moving then. Hey, you could start cutting. Hey, we'll let you drop back and step up in the pocket and make a throw. And that's where yeah, that'll be dicey, Mike. And that's where they're going to have to balance, wait, is Brock Purdy doing good enough to where we let Jimmy keep getting better and maybe he could play for us in the Super Bowl or something like that and we give him another week or two in practice? Or is Brock Purdy so bad that, damn, Jimmy Garoppolo at 80% or 75% is good enough and let's throw him back in there? And that's the decision they'll make here. But, yeah, I have a hard time thinking he's going to be ready wild card or divisional round, even though if that's the weak time frame that's you know kind of set up right now. There's another factor that just occurred to me, too. I think that if they become comfortable with Brock Purdy as the alternative to Trey Lance in 2023, yeah. if Lance, for some reason, is either still injured or has a new injury or just isn't very good – why do you want to complicate your life for next year by reintroducing the Garoppolo factor into the mix? You know, because the report was out there Sunday. Not that it's really news. The door isn't closed on Jimmy G staying with the 49ers next year. Well, no crap, it's not closed. There's still chapters left in this book. We're still trying to see what the 49ers are going to be. And if they get to the Super Bowl and if they win it, of course Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be back next year. You're not going to let him walk away, assuming you can convince him to stay that's the problem the more attractive he is to you the more attractive he is to everyone else and you've got your starter supposedly you're only going to keep him by paying him starter money because there's going to be somebody else that wants to if he has some great finish to the season my point is this you avoid all that crap if you are happy with Brock Purdy yeah if you're content for him to be your alternative to Trey Lance and you just don't want to recomplicate your life with this, when will we finally rip the Band-Aid off of the Jimmy Garoppolo experiment? The Band-Aid's currently off. Let's not put it back on. I think that, you know, and I know when you get into playoff mode, Chris, you just want to win games. But if things are close, if yeah, all things are I, equal, I, I hear that's you. a reason to say, let's I hear you. We're, we're past the Garoppolo right. phase. Right. We are Lance and Purdy for 23, 24, and 25. I, I, I don't disagree with your thought there. I think you're right. If he can close that gap to where they go, wait, 
you know, Jimmy being on the field is here and Brock Purdy's right here right now with the way he's played and Jimmy's not 100%. I, I, I don't disagree with your thought there. You know, Ty goes to Purdy. Ty goes to the, you know, less dysfunctional conversation for our off season or hoopla or whatever you want to say there. Yeah, I, I, I could see that. I could. And I, I wouldn't be shocked if we saw Brock Purdy, you know, look pretty good and manage this offense. And Shanahan, if there was ever a flaw in, in Kyle Shanahan, it might have been like, maybe being too aggressive and not managing games at times, right? Where, like, when he had Nick Mullins a few years ago, he was still running an offense and being aggressive, and I just want to go, damn, you know, he's going to throw an interception or get strip sack fumbled. That's just what he's going to do. And I'd watch the game and go, gosh, if he would just kneel on the ball the whole game, they're going to win the game because their defense is good enough, and he'll come up with some trick play, and they'll, they'll, they'll get it done. And I think he has been less, you know, aggressive, maybe – asking Jimmy to do something crazy every now and then, and he'll manage Purdy the right way, and they got the team to manage him. And Purdy's played a lot of college football. That's the other thing they got going for them too. This is not a guy like Trey Lance who was like, well, he barely played in college, let alone he hasn't played in the NFL. Purdy got four years of a ton of pro offense experience in Iowa State. Shanahan run the ball, right? Hey, a few little short passes, play defense, Shanahan will come up with a few trick plays, screens, reverses, speed sweeps like we always see, and we'll go, well, Brock Purdy looks pretty good. And I, if they can do that, then they can still be a, a real pain in the ass and for everybody in the NFC. Brock Purdy, the guy who looks like someone that you think you should know who it is and it drives you crazy until you figure out who it is. In a few weeks, we may be saying, we know who Brock Purdy looks like. He, he lo looks like He looks pretty, pretty good. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.